The ECHOES project aims to develop a technology-enhanced learning environment in which both typically developing children and children with Asperger's syndrome at Key Stage 1 can explore and improve social interaction and collaboration skills. Some children can find it very difficult to explore different ways of communicating with, with their peers. Technology can actually provide a platform to try out things without the fear of failure or ridicule or exclusion. This is one of our first prototypes that we've created for a school up in uh, Scotland. The backdrop is a garden environment and the avatar gives social cues as to which of the objects he wants the child to transfer into a vase. The data that we collect is very rich because we've got several webcams and it's got a multi-touch overlay on it. This is the black frame around it and all this data is collected to see which social cues the child is able to pick up. There is a huge recognition of the importance of affective computing and this is the ability of the system to be able to reason about and to act on what it observes about the child in real time. Context aware technologies means that we try to capture the context in which children interact with uh, uh, other peers and then try to build a system that intelligently responds to that context and the changes within. Not that one. We can correlate the kinds of sounds that the child is making with the facial expressions, where the child is looking, where the child is touching the screen. So for example, if the child is frustrated, it is probably a good time for the, for the, for the system to, to intervene. So hopefully, if we have uh, an agent who can display emotions as well as recognize emotions of the child, the children will be able to, um, to pick up on those, on those different uh, cues and transfer it to the real world. The project aims to create an interactive, multimodal environment that utilises a number of technologies, but as co-investigator and a specialist in participatory design, Judith Good explains, at the core of their work lies understanding the needs of their users. If you're dealing with children on the autistic spectrum, then what you find is a lot of the technology that's been proposed for those children is often sort of seen as assistive devices. So what you're really doing is highlighting the difference as somehow those children are, are different from typically developing children. So when we started out designing Echoes, we started working with children in terms of the design. What do children like? What do they respond to? What are their preferences? And so we try and get them involved as design partners from the very start. The requirements we have in ECHOs are actually uh, slightly different from most of the other eye gaze um, systems out there. We've found out that when children jump around in front of a screen, it's very difficult to follow their gaze. And that's why we decided to kind of invest our time into something that would suit our requirements best. There are some schools already who, who have multi-touch screens, um, so this is encouraging. But it is still a very expensive technology. So it's probably not yet possible for every school to have. Whiteboards are now commonplace and weren't five years ago and we hope that multi-touch surfaces such as uh, the one that we have in, in Echoes uh, are going to be much more widely available in schools in five years time. So we try to look into the future here. The fact that the Echoes project involves input from eight institutions across the UK demonstrates the academic interest in how further development in artificial intelligence might impact on pedagogical attitudes of the future. When artificial intelligence kind of started out, there were, there were uh, big claims made about where we would be uh, in 20 years' time, and those haven't really materialised. So it is a very challenging thing. I mean, even just defining from a psychological theory point of view, what is motivation? What are the different emotional states? How should we be responding to them? And that's all kind of knowledge that teachers have, but making that knowledge explicit and then implementing it in the computer system is extremely challenging. There seems to be some early findings that indicate that just with the simple agent that we've implemented so far, that children who are on the spectrum are very willing to engage with Paul, our agent, in, in a sort of very meaningful way. There's some sense that they're able to regulate their behaviour in a way that at the very beginning of the interaction with Paul that they weren't able to do and that's really interesting. If you think back to your own learning, what were the points that really stood out? And I guarantee there was a teacher 
who behaved in an inspirational way. There were things to do that were really challenging and engaging and exciting. And there were people to talk to about you, what you were doing to help you reflect on what you do. And the extent to which computers are going to help us in learning and teaching is the extent that they can behave like that. Well done. If we can emulate human tutors and human teachers' behaviour, then we can provide education that is effective for a much wider population than it is currently possible. It is not about replacing the classroom learning, it's about providing extra support to it. Then I think it's, <laughs> it's something that, that, that is worth investing in. <laughs>